how would you like to develop a forehand that has pinpoint deadly accuracy so when you're out there playing your match and you're trying to win you can hit the ball wherever you want whenever you want that sounds good let's get started Okay, so to be able to hit the ball wherever you want, whenever you want, you've got to really understand how your body works from the ground up, which is called the kinetic chain, and how you want to work in sync, in harmony with each other, so you can consistently hit the ball where you want, okay? And so I call these control levers on your body. And the first one, we're gonna start right from the ground. So we're building up our control, our accuracy, right from the ground. So when you get ready to hit, and you're getting ready to hit a forehand, I always like to get my students what I call an open option forehand stance, meaning that you're starting with your leg open. This is an open stance. The more open you go, it becomes a full open. The more you close up a little bit, it becomes a semi-open. Semi-open, full open, it doesn't matter. I want you to pay attention to how your foot kind of curves around, and this part right here I want you to know where it's pointing, okay? So right now I'm actually set up to hit a cross court forehand. If I start to turn it this way, now it's gonna be easier. Not that I can't hit a cross court, but now it's starting to set my foot up to hit it down the line. So just paying attention to little things like that, it's gonna make your direction set up so much easier. So again, pop quiz guys, where is my foot now set up to hit the ball? I'm in that open option stance. That means I have the option to either step in forward to the ball or I can stay open, okay? But I'm set up now to easily get that ball going cross court. Very easy to go cross court from here, all right? Now, if I move my foot here more, now it becomes a lot easier to go down the line. So that's the first thing I want to set up. Now, if we choose to step into the ball, it becomes very important how our foot steps into the ball, okay? We're not going to step into the ball the same every time. So I have the option here to hit open. I don't have to close my body up and step in. But I love people, when they have time, to step in. It does add some power and it also can add control if you use your step the correct way. So if I'm set up here and I want to go cross court, what I don't want to do, and a lot of people do, they'll, they'll stop too soon. So as I'm moving, it's very important that I land on the open option and that I'm not too far away from the ball to where I then don't step across to hit because now I start locking up the hips and limit my option of where I can go. I want to move in a way that when I stop, if I want to hit cross court, I can then step out with my toe, kind of like I'm doing a lunge in a, in a group fitness class towards the target, okay? So if I want to go cross court, I'm going to come here and step towards the target. If I'm going to go down the line, it's slightly different. I'm here and I'm going to step towards the line, okay? If I start to step here, now I limit my options. First of all, it's not even that easy to go down the line. I'm kind of in a fight with my body, but it becomes kind of my only option and to hit cross court becomes very, very difficult. So let me show you what I mean. If I want to step into this ball as I'm getting ready to hit, again, I've got my open option stance set up to hit a cross court. And then if I want to step and hit cross court, I'm going to step that way. I'm not going to step this way. This would be if I want to hit down the line. So I come here and I step out that way and I get the ball going cross court. Let's try that again. I come here, step out that way, get the ball going cross court. If I wanna go down the line, now I'm going to come here and step out this way. All right, so a nice little forward lunge this way. Easy to get that ball going down the line. The one move I definitely don't want to do, and this would happen if you stop too early, which a lot of people do. A lot of people come here, they'll leave this foot behind, they'll stop too early, and then they'll take one big lunge here, hitting cross court. You can do it, it becomes very awkward, you're not going to have any power, and then also your recovery becomes quite difficult. Where if I come here, and I get set up, and I can step in, bring this back foot around, and start to move back to the middle. So this is how we're using our legs 
for control. Now we're going to move up to our upper body and talk about how these control levers work to control and develop a deadly accurate forehand. So now as we work our way up the kinetic chain, the hips become very, very important. I see a lot of people mess this up and uh, I find that people especially who are trying to develop an open stance forehand, they've never done it before, they're watching lots of YouTube videos, they're seeing Rafael Nadal hit open stance, they're seeing pretty much every player on the tour are going to hit a lot of open stance forehand. So that naturally you want to do it too is you're here, you got your hips set up, and then you see all this you see all this torque and everything that these pros are doing and bringing their chest out like this and then swinging across. So you're trying to do that too. And what ends up happening is you're not doing it the same way that they're doing it. And you end up bringing the ball, spraying the ball way wide cross court. Okay, so even though it's true that the pros are using lots of torque, they're coming here, you're gonna see lots of pictures like this. The first place their hip starts to rotate towards and push is they're pushing the momentum, first of all, towards the direction they want to go. They're very good at feeling this part of their body as they go, and they start to push it towards the target. So if I, and it's going to be maybe hard to see on video, but if I want to push this cross court, I make sure as I go, I'm more pushing that hip cross court first, and then coming around. I'm coming here, I'm loading. It becomes especially important if you're going to hit an open stance for you, that you want to have a nice load, and then you're pushing your hip out to where you want the ball to go. I'm pushing my hip out to where I want to go. That's cross court. That's down the line. If I want to go down the line, it'd be even better if I had my toe here and I'd come here and push that hip down the line. Then I'd hit. Then I'd start to rotate over. If you just are thinking about all this rotation and cool looking moves that you see, you're going to miss a lot of balls wide. I've had a lot of students come and take lessons from me. And since they're trying to do what they see on TV, this is what I see happen, so trust me, this works. Now, even if you're someone who's stepping in, the same thing still applies. You have to feel, as you're here set up, now how are those hips moving together? I think especially if you're gonna step in, you could almost think a little more like, like a golfer kind of putting, right? And moving those hips towards the hole, you're just moving those hips now towards your target. So I'll show you from the back view what that would look like. So here we go, so I'm gonna be here, and I'm going to go cross court and we're going to step in and we're going to have those hips move and sway, really feeling it in here in the tummy area again, a lot like a golfer putting. We're going to be there and having that same nice, subtle, smooth feel out towards our cross court target. Okay, now we're up to the shoulders, and again, this is where we love Roger, we love Roger, we love Murray, we love them all, right? We love all these great players, Novak, we love you, Serena, we love you, but look, you're confusing us as players, because when we keep seeing photo after photo of these pros looking like this when we're hitting, again, we're trying to copy that, and it's killing our accuracy on the forehand, okay? In fact, I recommend a lot of you do not even try that. But um, they're still using their shoulders in sync. Their shoulders are in sync. Now, you're gonna see almost every professional tennis player, when they see the ball coming, they are holding on to that racket. Now, besides just adding all kinds of of power release coming through the hips because they're holding on this racket. It's like they're spring-loaded here by holding on the racket as opposed to being like this. You see I have less power now as I go as opposed to really loading up and really getting some power going so I can use my kinetic chain. They're also sinking up the shoulders to wherever they want that ball to go. Again, every single move is working together. Nothing's working against each other. So when they come and they want to go cross court, they're here and then as they're on load, even if they're coming this way, their shoulders and everything is still more pushing towards the target. They're feeling those shoulders go towards the target. They have more of an ability to do that. It's harder to see. It almost, you know, it's, it's more something you have to feel that their shoulders and everything, their hips are still working towards the target, then they're coming around. And so it's really easy to just see this and go like that. And again, this is where I find people even though they're trying to hit the ball harder, they end up hitting a much weaker ball and they lose control. Again, they most likely hit wide or they have the ball dumping in the net. So what you want to think about, if you want to go open, really focus on keeping those shoulders 
and the, the upper body close longer. I find that most recreational players, when they see this, they start to go, they start to open up way too early and then again, missing. They're spraying the ball, they're losing power. Keep yourself spring loaded as long as possible. Feel your shoulders more, work out towards the target and then come around. Even better than that, to really start to get your consistency down and control over the ball, don't worry about all this stuff, okay? More, I like to think of it like your hands are in a relationship. This is the guy hand, this is the girl hand, and they're in a relationship and they're working together. You work those shoulders together, it gets really easy to start to get control and also feel your core get on the ball, everything working together, where if I'm gonna go down the line, I have my hands working together, they're following each other and the ball's going out there. If I wanna go cross court, I'm gonna go right over the camera, that goes to show what kind of confidence I have in this, and I'm not gonna hit my camera and I'm gonna be able to control it right up above the camera and going cross court. I'm gonna come here, hands work together towards the camera, and now we're lifting that ball up and cross court. Let me show you from the back view, with these working together, keeping our shoulders going out towards the target. So when you work these shoulders, I want you to think of your shoulders like a steering wheel. How much does it take, if you've got your hand on the wheel, how much does it take to get over to the next lane or to get over to that lane? Let's say I'm driving and I want to go this lane. Look, if I do this, I just moved over to the other lane. If I, go, if I want to go that way, I just moved over, I'm very subtle, you can't really tell. Okay, so again, you're not needing these big dramatic moves in your shoulders to get the ball to go from down the line to cross court. You don't need that. You need little subtle adjustments so that you can make the ball move. In fact, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a ball down the line, up the middle, and cross court. And first, I'm going to shadow stroke it. Watch this, guys. Especially when I'm using my hands together and going out to the target. This is down the line. This is up the middle. This is cross court. Now for most people when I do that demo they're like I can barely see a difference and that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. There's not much of a difference. It's really really subtle with your legs, the changes in your legs, the changes in your hips and now we're really focused on the shoulders. So again they're working together we go down the line. We go up the middle. We go cross court. Right? You see that? One, two, three. And every time I was just making little subtle changes here, little subtle changes here, little subtle changes here. Now I've got one more lever we've got to really pay attention to, otherwise it can blow the entire stroke. Okay, so the good news is, is we have our shot set up. Almost our entire body is ready for deadly, accurate, consistent forehands, but there's one body part that has veto power over everything, and that is the palm. So you've also got to have really good racket head awareness and control in here. What, what your hand is doing as it's making contact is super important. This is where a lot of people look like they're about to hit a great shot, they're doing everything right with their body, and then their hands just a little off, whether it's opening up, whether, whether you're trying to, the best example I can give you is, is you might have in your mind, you have everything set up to go cross court, and then as you're getting ready to hit, you're a little late and you're here, and even though the whole shot is going cross court, you end up hitting down the line. In fact, really good proof of this happening is often you'll see players like Federer, people like to do cat and mouse games, people like Federer and Kyrgios and Murray, especially Federer and Kyrgios, I've seen them do it a lot, and they usually win the point because of this, is they'll do kind of like a no-look shot down the line or cross court to where they'll have everything in their body set up to go one direction. Here I'm set up to go cross court, and at the last second they'll just use their hand to steer it down the line. And again, they can't consistently do this and win points. This is just a hot dog shot that they do to kind of show off when they're a little closer, the shot's a little easier, then they can do that. But to play consistent championship style tennis like Federer does, for the most part, he's keeping everything in sync. Everything's gonna agree. If he sets up his body to go cross court, his palm is also gonna be directing towards cross court. If he wants to go down the line, again, his hand is gonna be directed to go down the line. So this is really, really important. If you sync these, these up now, now you got the ball going exactly where you want. If you can get that hand to go out exactly where you want, 
So we'll just show you some shots here from the back view with everything a green. They're all in sync. So again, let's include all our body parts. I think that's the easiest way to start is we're gonna be stepping in. We're gonna be setting up our feet a certain way. We're gonna be using the hips, the shoulders, all a green. And of course, then the palm has to agree two to go cross court. It has to agree two to go down the line. You see, I'm making these little adjustments from cross court to down the line. And we're able to, if we're able to do this, now we're moving our opponent, if you're watching this, we're moving our opponent side to side to side on a string. Wouldn't you like to have that? Wouldn't you like to be consistent? Well, you know what? It so happens that I have a three-part series called Consistency Stop Missing for No Reason at All. I actually came up with this course. It's a 30-day challenge if you decide to take it a step further. But you can check out a, a free three-part series, which is really, really awesome. I did it with my buddy Matt Bradshaw. And um, there was somebody who wrote me an email one day and he went on this long rant, but the thing that stood out to me in his frustration, he's like, I play these matches and I seem to do everything right and then I miss for no reason at all. So this course is about showing all about why people miss for no reason at all. I call them consistency leaks. And then I show you how to clean up those leaks with efficient movements, with lots of drills you can do, lots of mind things you can do, because that's what it's all about. It's about syncing up the body and the mind. So check out this preview, and then I will see you over in the free train, and you're gonna love it. If you like this video, give it a like, comment, let me know what you think about this. Was there anything I left out? Do you like it? Do you think you're gonna go out and try this? And certainly subscribe. I mean, gosh, if you like tennis and you're watching videos like this, you might as well subscribe and tell all your friends about it too. Okay, watch this preview and I'll see you on the next video. Well, Matt, we just finished up our master class clinic. It was awesome. Everybody did great. Lots of spirit. Absolutely. But we had a lot of fun out mm -hmm. here, but there's one problem, Pete. What was the problem, Matt? A lot of people, despite all the great shots we saw, making mistakes, missing for absolutely no reason at all. We surveyed over 300 of our Crunch Time family and 90% of the respondents said the thing that was holding them back in their tennis game, unforced errors that seemingly just creep in from nowhere at all.